Hi, my name is Linda Cord and I go to Trinity Presbyterian Church in Grey Abbey. And I just want to start my testimony by reading a verse from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. We have been called according to his purpose. But, you know, I was very privileged to be brought up in a Christian home. My mum and dad both were Christians and took us to church and Sunday school every Sunday. And um, we went to the GB and all the different organisations in the church. And uh, we were privileged to be brought up in a Christian home. I had one sister and uh, we both loved the Lord and both had a good life. But then um, when I was about 16, I met my first husband. And, um, well, things progress as they usually do. We were married when we were 19 and everything was fine. We were going along great. And then he lost his job and things took a downward spiral. We got a new job and he got a job in Fermanagh in Lisnesky. That's where we went to live. And, you know, things were different down there. Um, I was used to being brought up in a small place like Dundonald where everybody knew you and um, well you could, I didn't really do anything because my life revolved around the church but if you did go anywhere where you shouldn't there was always somebody who knew you but when we moved down to Fermanagh I had never been used going out to hotels with alcohol in it or bars or dances or anything like that and um, you know, sometimes the devil's subtle and he allows you to go to places and do things that you wouldn't normally do. And my way of getting around that was my excuse where I said, well, nobody knows me down here so I can do what I like. Now, <clears throat> we only stayed down there for about two years, but in those two years, when we used to go out at night, you know, young people, they love to go out and have a good time and drink and socialise and all the old things. But that was the one thing I never did. I didn't ever drink. But when we would be coming home in the car, they'd be saying, oh, here she goes again. Here's Linda, the preacher, starting out. And I would say, you know, if anything happens to us tonight, we'll go to a lost eternity because we'll not be in heaven. But they just laughed and thought, oh, here she goes, but never went. But, you know... God has different views and different ways to bring us back to him. And uh, my sister had a baby boy and he was getting dedicated in Dundon Dalem. And she said, would you not come up for the weekend and go to church? And we said, oh, well, all right, okay. But uh, when we arrived, there was a girl giving her testimony. And she's a very young girl and she told about how her husband was killed in a motorbike accident. He was a motorbike rider. And she said she thought her life was over, that that was just her life at an end. And she didn't know where to turn to. But she said she felt God talking to her. She turned to God and her life was not perfect by any means, but she got her life back and made a new life for herself. And um, as I was coming out of the church, I had listened really carefully, but I said to myself, well, I wouldn't like that to happen to me. That's some way to have to come back to the Lord. But we'll have to be very careful what we say because, you know, the Lord's in our home and he's with us all the time and he hears what we say. And we can't get away with saying things like that. So about a very short time afterwards, uh, my husband lost his job when we lost our home. And we moved back to Dundonald again where I was brought up. And things took a turn for the better then, and we started going to Dundonald Dalem, and we got involved in the BB, both of us, and um, we took the youth fellowship in the church, and we also, he also took the Saturday Night Youth Club, and so our life really revolved around the church. But then, eight years after we were married, I had my first daughter, and I just thought that was the best thing that could ever happen to anybody. And then a year later, I had another baby girl. And then two years later, I had my third daughter. So life was really good. And they were 
as they were growing up, they went to church and Sunday school and the GB and all, everything else. And then about maybe 22 years after I was married, my husband started going back to the Linfield. To, so he supported Linfield, so he we went to all the matches. But the devil is very subtle, and he used to say, sure you don't need to take your car, go on the supporters bus. And then, of course, the supporters bus, they let them off at a bar, and that was it. Shortly afterwards, he gave up the BB, gave up the youth work, and then stopped going to church on a Sunday. And then after 24 years, our marriage ended. And so it was me and the three girls again. And um, we got on well. We started going to a wee church and we really loved it. The girls were very happy and so was I. But I just thought to myself, you know, is this it? Is this it for me? Am I meant to be like this for the rest of my life? On my own with three girls. and. I spoke to my pastor one Sunday night and he said, Linda, God has a plan for you and it's not for you to be on your own. And I thought, oh, right. But I wasn't really too concerned or I just thought that life's okay. But shortly afterwards we were ending down, my daughter and I, and I met somebody that I'd known for years and years. I went to church with him when we were younger and it was Thomas my husband and I and uh, we started to chat and just um, he asked how I was and how her first husband was and I said oh I've been on my own for a while with the girls and of course one thing led to another and then Thomas left and he went over to see his sister in England so a couple of days later we phoned each other and Thomas arranged to um, go out with me on a Saturday night so he was very good and he didn't uh, drink on the Friday night or all day Saturday because he knew I didn't do any of those things and um, off we went and then we started going out together but there was one big stumbling block and that was the fact that Thomas wasn't saved. Now he had been saved when I knew him but he had backslid for 30 years and I just said Lord I just can't make this mistake. I have to um, if I'm going to meet somebody, they must be saved. And so I started to pray. I walked to work every morning and I prayed for two weeks. Lord, please save Thomas or just get rid of him. Now, I, I didn't know how I was going to get rid of him, but that wasn't the issue. So two weeks on the Sunday night, we went to church and we came home. And needless to say, I was really downhearted and disappointed because Thomas hadn't got saved. So on Monday morning going to work, I said, right, Lord, that's it. He has to go. I've made you a promise and I've asked you to save him and you haven't. So Tuesday night was a bit iffy and people came to visit. And then Wednesday night, as soon as he came in through the door, I said, Thomas, I have something to tell you. And he said, yes, so have I. And I says, you go first. And he says, I gave my heart to the Lord on Wednesday night. And you know, that was the best thing that ever could have happened because six months after we were engaged and about five months after that we were married and it was just to be and God knew where I was and where Thomas was and I had the three daughters and Thomas had two sons and I always wanted a boy and Thomas I think would always have loved a daughter of his own so now we have five children, three girls, two boys and ten grandchildren but my daughters, two of them were missionaries. Uh, one was in India, Zimbabwe and Australia and the other one worked for the Church of Ireland. But, you know, things happen in life and we don't know the reason behind it, but God had a plan and the two girls I walked away from God. Now, I do believe God will bring them back as he did with Thomas and me both. But um, it's just hard because you know, they love the Lord so much and we just pray that God will indeed bring them back to himself and save his two sons. But 
Shortly after that, well, we were married and everything was going well. The girls were doing well and so were we. And my mum fell in the house one day. And so I sister, now you'll have to come and stay with me, mommy and Thomas. So she came anyway and she stayed a couple of weeks. And then the next thing was I sister, oh, mommy, I think you'd like to stay here. So the following morning I came in and she said, I phoned up where I live and told them I'm not coming back, I'm coming to live with you. So that was all right. Mommy came to live with us for, I would say six or seven years, but then unfortunately she took Alzheimer's. And um, you know, my mommy really loved the Lord and uh, she used to sing all the old hymns and the choruses and she could have read the Bible from one side to the other. And she went to church with us all the time. And then, unfortunately, I took cancer and mommy couldn't stay with us. She had to go into a home just beside us, but she was great. And we went all the time to visit her and everything was good. And then she fell and broke her hip. And they took her into hospital. And then on Friday morning, the doctor sent for us and uh, he said, do you want to say your goodbyes? And I said, <clears throat> well, yes, we do, but you have plenty of time. And he said, oh, no, <clears throat> you've only got a couple of hours at the most. So we were all there. And Mommy went to heaven. But, you know, the thing was, I knew where she was going. And I knew she was going to be with my daddy. And that was a far better place than where she was. And so now she has no Alzheimer's and she's perfectly well and of sound mind and the Lord has her with them. So that was all right. Thomas and I then sort of got on with their life again and we started going to wee church up the Shankill and we really got stuck into it, to be honest, and we took the children's meeting. When we started, there were 12 children went and by the time we finished taking them, there was 35. And three of the young girls all gave their heart to the Lord on the one night. So everything was good. And then Thomas and I were out for a drive one day and he says, I think the time has come to move house. And you know, my memories with my mummy were all in my house. And uh, But you know, memories aren't made in bricks and mortar. They're made in your heart. And so my mum and dad both will always be in my heart, no matter where I live. So we were driving through Grey Abbey and we saw a bungalow and Thomas, he just decided this was where we were to go and see. So we went to see it and the girl whose mother had owned it before she died and father, she was a Christian. And so Thomas sat in the city and he just said, this is the house for us. And so that's how we ended up in Grey Abbey from Dundonald. So things were good and we, you know, life was good. We moved into our bungalow and we were getting it sorted and we had a daughter lived in America so we went to visit her and one lives in England and we went to visit her. And then when we come back, we sort of thought, now we need to get a church. So we were going up one day, up just up the town, and we came to this church that sits on the corner and I said, oh, there's a big church, Trinity Presbyterian, but you know, it was 40, 50 odd years since I had been in the Presbyterian and because I was so used with Thelem. But you know, they had a big sign up and it said Spiritville Church. And we looked at each other and I just said, that's the church for us. And so now that's where we go. We go to Grey Abbey Presbyterian and we love it. And you know, it's a real blessing because Neil the minister and his wife and family are really great and Neil is a real spirit filled minister and speaks and tells the word of God every week without fail. And you know this old coronavirus, I believe the devil's using it to get at everybody but especially Christians and he's saying to them, oh sure you've missed three or four weeks, why not just miss another three or four and maybe why not just stay at home on a Sunday. But that's not God's plans. God has plans for us and he has plans for the church and I believe he will bring them to pass in the, in the near future. And so Thomas and I are just going every week and just praying that 
maybe something will turn up for us to do. Where I think we're a wee bit past the uh, youth work and children's work, but who knows? If God wants us there, then that's where we'll be. But I do believe He has a work for us somewhere, and hopefully it'll be in Trinity Presbyterian. But you know, I started off by saying this wee verse. I'm going to read it again, and we know that all things. God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I believe that God has called us to Trinity Presbyterian and I believe that that's the place for us and God is really working in it. So I hope you've enjoyed this wee word and I hope I haven't gone on too long. But God bless you all. <laughs>